Hi everyone! Today we're going to look at a lab to explore how changes made to the wave properties will affect the wave. We made a wave machine with sticks, gummy candies, and tape and attached each end to a table. Before we go into the experiments, we need to understand the wave properties. Let's take a look at a picture of a wave. A wave pulse is a single bump or disturbance that travels through a medium. The crest is each high point and the trail is each low point. The amplitude of the motion is the maximum distance that the object moves from equilibrium. The period is the time needed for an object to repeat one complete cycle of the motion, and the wavelength is the shortest distance between points where the wave pattern repeats itself. Any two points on a wave that are one or more wavelengths apart are in phase. The first experiment is done by using an amplitude that we set as standard. This is going to be the standard amplitude throughout the experiment. Our, our hypothesis is that the reflected wave will not be inverted, and the amplitude will decrease over time. This is because the energy transfer is reflected back, creating a reflecting wave. There are some following waves that comes after the initial wave, which causes destructive interference to the reflecting wave. The pulses do not eventually resume their original form because the destructive interference keeps occurring. The experiment proves that the hypothesis is valid. The, the reflected wave is not inverted, has constant speed throughout, and the amplitude decreases over time. Experiment 2 Double Amplitude In the second experiment, the amplitude is doubled. We hypothesize that the speed of the wave will not be affected and the only change will be the doubling amplitude. Let's compare it to the basic wave. The experiment shows that the reflective wave is not inverse. It has a constant speed throughout and the amplitude is doubled. The reason is that the difference depends on how the wave is generated, not its speed. Waves with greater amplitudes transfer more energy. Inputting more energy will not affect the wavelength, frequency, or speed, but only the amplitude. For the third experiment, we double the candies on half of the wave machine. Instead of having two candies per stick, we increase the number to four candies per stick. By doubling the weight, we predicted that the incident wave, when striking the boundary, which is, halfway, which is a halfway point, will be divided into a transmitted pulse that will continue down the wave machine and a reflected pulse that will reflect it back from the halfway point. The reflected pulse will be inverted and have smaller amplitude. The speed and wavelength will be the same on the reflected pulse. The explanation for this is that since the reflected wave and the incident wave are in the same medium, they will have the same speed and wavelength. The transmitted wave, however, continues down the wave machine and will not be inverted, and will have speed, amplitude, and wavelengths that are greater than that of the incident wave. This is because the incident wave travels from a denser medium, the one for the more candy, to so a less dense medium. As a result, when a wave strikes a boundary, the candy, the, the energy is carried over to the less dense medium. The amplitude will increase because it is lighter on the second half, while the energy stays the same. The frequency will stay the same because of the handshake principle, which states that the frequency of one hand will be the same as the frequency of another hand, which can be translated into one side of the wave machine will have the same frequency as the other side of the wave machine. The experiment shows that the speed increases on the transmitted wave, and the reflected wave is inverted. The last experiment is done with one closed end with a standard amplitude. Our hypothesis is that the reflected wave will be the inverse of the incident wave, and the amplitude will decrease over time. The boundary of the wave is the hand holding the end of the wave. Some energy is transmitted into the hand each time the wave meets the hand. Because some energy is lost from the wave, the amplitude decreases over time. The experiment shows that the wave is inverted and the amplitude decreases over time. 
For an extension, we decided to double the number of sticks on half of the wave machine, similar to the third experiment with doubling the candies on one half. We are creating a denser medium and a less dense medium. We hypothesize that the same result will happen as that with doubling the candies. The incident wave will be divided into reflected and transmitted waves. The reflected poles will be inverted and have smaller amplitude. The speed and wavelength will be the same on the reflected poles. The transmitted wave is not inverted and has speed and wavelength that are greater than the incident wave, and the frequency will stay the same. Conclusion Some sources of errors of the lab include 1. Sticks on the wave machine may not be exactly evenly spaced. 2. The amplitude used for each experiment may not be exactly equal. 3. Wind may have caused turbulence to the wave machine. In this lab, we discovered that 1. Wave speed and wavelengths are greater in less dense medium. 2. Frequency won't be changed by boundaries in incident waves. 3. Amplitude of the reflective and transmitted pulse will be smaller than the incident pulse because falling waves create destructive interference and some energy is lost at the boundaries to the other medium. A few potential extensions to this lab include but are not limited to 1. Creating an interfering wave 2. Having the sticks on half of the wave machine 3. Making the sticks slanted at an angle in this lab, we have explored how changes made to the wave properties will affect the wave. Thanks for watching!